got um, not just one, but two United States women's national team friendlies to talk about. They're going to be uh, taking, uh, taking, uh, participating, excuse me, in a two game series against Nigeria. The first of which will kick off uh, in Kansas city. And then they will meet once more in Washington, D.C. So Saturday, you can find the United States Women's National Team in Kansas City, Children's Mercy Park. That's going to be kicking off at uh, noon ET. You can watch that action all on Fox. And then Tuesday will be at Audi Field at 6 p.m. local time. You can watch that on ESPN. You know, Lisa, when the initial roster dropped, for uh, the training camps for for these friendlies, it, it was you know the energy was usual suspects, right? We we didn't see a ton of change from the the twenty three player roster that competed in July for the Concacaf W Championship, and that included you know a player like uh, or players like Sam Coffey, uh, Ashley Hatch. You know Hatch was someone who came out mm -hmm. uh, of that tournament due to an injury, coffee slotting into her place, but all of these players uh, got brought back in. And initially, Emily Sonnet wasn't listed on the roster due to said injury, but but that was the 23. This, we, we saw, we didn't really see a ton of change going from July to August. Uh, but some recent news, uh, we've chatted a little bit about it in previous episodes. There's been a couple of different additions or additional uh, players coming into to this roster. Both Haley Mace and Savannah DeMello uh, are jumping into to fill in some 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 certain positions. I mean, well, let's start. Let's start with that. Uh, we first saw that Haley Mace was going to come on in. Uh, and, and replace Kelly O'Hara, someone who is uh, also dealing with a lingering hip injury. But then we also got news of Savannah DeMello entering the fold, but coming in place for Trinity Rodman, who has a family commitment. Um, so those are the two newest additions to this roster ahead of these two friendlies. Yeah, and, and one thing that we did touch on right when this news broke is that it's it's not like for like swaps in this one um, with Trinity Rodman being swapped in for or Savannah DeMello, excuse me, being swapped in for Trinity Rodman. That's a midfielder for a forward. Very different types of players. Um, likewise with Haley Mace, Kelly O'Hara is is the defender, um, which we have seen Mace play in, in her time, but she's traditionally a midfielder. Um, it likes to be a little bit higher up the pitch, but I imagine that we'll see her slotted into that back line, but not, not like for like in terms of like how they play and positionally, I don't think um, because of, of the swap for Savannah DeMello initially, I really like that. It's great to see a player like that um, get her first international senior team call up into this camp. I hope she gets time, right? I hope she sees minutes. Like these are good friendlies for some of these younger players or maybe inexperienced players on the roster to get minutes, whether it's someone like um, a Savannah DeMello or even a Sam Coffey, Taylor Korniak, players that maybe were called into the CONCACAF W Championship in terms of Korniak and Coffey got there towards the end of it. But I want to see them get time. Like, that's the point of this. Yes, the point is to be in training and to compete and to have that level of intensity and, and understand what it's like to be playing along some of the very best players in the entire world. But in order to really see how that translates from training to the pitch, like, Black Wendanowski needs to play a little bit of uh, of these players and give them time and give them minutes. Um, I think the same goes for Haley Mace, but I'm also not sure if we'll see her get time. It's, it's like just because in the yeah. back line, he's still trying to really establish players like Emily Fox, Sofia Huerta in that back line. Um, now without Kelly O'Hara, yeah, maybe that opens things up for Mace. But in terms of moving forward, I'm just not sure how fluid that back line is going to look as we get nearer and nearer to the World Cup and, and with a player like Crystal Dunn being back in training. No, she's not competing. Like she's also slotting into that back line. So it makes the competition for a back four spot that much tighter. And and frankly, in the World Cup, I doubt we'll see that much rotation between that back line, maybe an outside back here or there every other game, but um, it becomes a little bit more of a solidifying spot in, in that back line. When when we talk about the first game versus Nigeria in Kansas City and then the second one in D.C., um, do you think that we'll see a lot of differences between these 
styles of play. I know this is like really yeah. jumping in the gun here, but like styles of play, whether we see the U.S. try to switch things up, if the formation will be very, very similar. I know that at times Lachlan and has said, no, we're starting the same three. It's going to be Sophia Smith, Mallory Pugh, Alex Morgan up top. We want to see them get consistent minutes, find a rhythm. Like they're going to be the starters and they're going to play together, like have more of that positional rotation versus just mixing it all up. No, I, I hear you 100% and where you're going. But before I answer that, I want to, you know, touch on on Demello and um, oh yeah, Melissa's addition to to the roster real, real quick. I, I know we've talked about it on, on previous episodes, but if, for anyone who's joining us, um, you know, live for the first time and sort of hearing uh, the new additions, like I know that we were like excited to sort of see the fact that these players got got called in. So like with with Mace, you've got a player who um, really hasn't had a lot of time in senior level national team camps, um, period. And the experience that she has is already like stemming back to several years ago. So, so the last time she was with, you know, the senior national team, it was in 2018 and in a, so the complete previous cycle and only has about three caps next to her name. So I, I I'm with you in what you were saying, where maybe we might not see these, these two players get, get time on, on the pitch because I don't imagine that these two players coming in is it's, it's sort of being viewed as like this kind of shakeup ahead of the world cup, you know, with the, with the timeline that they have anywhere from like eight to 10 months, um, to sort of build up to 2023. I don't view these two players additions as like, Hey, here's another shakeup of the roster before, you know, settling things out for, for 2023. And, um, you know, Mace coming, it, it, she's into this camp, I think for an, a, two very specific reasons. Number one is that she's in really great form right now with the Kansas city current. She's been, she's been playing a lot of great soccer with, with her, with her club team. And one of these friendlies is going to be in Kansas city. So it's like partially like, Hey, she's in really good form. And you know what? We need a replacement. Kelly O'Hara's out with, with injury. This is very last minute. We're already in Kansas city. Why don't you come on in and, and join the fold and, and, and mix it up in the fray with us, you know? So um, I'm excited for her, for her inclusion, but I don't imagine that it's going to be a real massive shakeup in that back line. Cause I'm in hundred percent agreement with you, Lisa, and that, Andonofsky and the coaching staff is trying to settle things out with with players like Fox, with players like uh, Sofia Huerta. And the fact that you've got somebody like Crystal Dunn back into the fold, you're you're also keeping an eye on that player as well. Right. Phenomenal athlete. So um, I, I would imagine um, sort of transitioning this to the question that you asked me. I don't really know if we're going to see um, some tactical changes. I really do feel that this coaching staff is sort of looking at this next buildup, these next several months um, leading up to the World Cup as opportunities to sort of iron out starting 11s, right? Mm -hmm. Iron out your your game changers, your, your ideal substitutions perhaps, um, and really just make sure you're cementing any type of chemistry that you can and really start playing some, some cohesive soccer, um, which is uh, maybe unfortunate in a certain sense, because I know for, for you and I, we would maybe like to see games like this be utilized to mix up some things. I mean, if, if this is the final stretch of preparation for the world cup, like you should, you should be doing those things. Like maybe you, maybe Nigeria is going to present some very different challenges for this roster specifically that just won CONCACAF W championship, right? So they faced a lot of certain um, different type of game scenarios against all of those CONCACAF nations, right? But they're absolutely going to be facing something different in a team against a team like Nigeria, a, a team that is very, very smart on the ball that can turn a game on its head very, very quickly. And so these are, these are going to be challenges obviously for your defensive shape. So I'm, I'm eager to sort of see what, what this U.S. women's national team can do with that against the opposition like Nigeria. Um, but I, I really do think we're going to con continue to see this kind of this front line trio of, you know, of, of Pew, of Smith, of Morgan. I think they're really trying to go. The coaching have is, is maybe giving them instruction on how to continue to build together. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we were just talking about some of the fun some of the fun banter that we were seeing between them online, you know, for, for club, it's like, Oh no, it's like, Hey, it's like, you're scoring. I gotta, I gotta get on the board too. And it's like, Oh no, the two of you are like getting on the board. I gotta, I gotta keep up too. So we're starting to see it both on and off the pitch. And, and I just think that that's something that we're going to continue to see in these games in uh, against Nigeria. I agree. I mean, the formation and like 
defensively structure for this U.S. side. I'm not sure. Someone in our chat asking about Savannah DeMello. Is she a six? She With Racing Louisville, she plays higher, right? We have, um, have Jalen Howe in that six. I mean, most recently with Louisville, we've yeah. seen them actually play more of a box in the midfield. Or yeah, the I, th- I think there are there are lulls of the game with Louisville right. where, where DeMello can be kind of like that kind of passing midfielder. But She's just with, so with good. Box, so she it's it's always... She's moving always around. Yeah, I mean, she can play that defensive six, but I don't think she will. When you look at this roster for the U.S., I think he's going to try to put um, DeMello a little bit higher. You've got players like um, Sam Coffey coming into this, that she yeah. plays the six. And in college at Penn State, she uh, Coffey played much higher. She was more of an attacking midfielder. And now with Portland, we've seen her really grow into that defensive midfield yeah. role with Andy Sullivan there as well. I That's something that I could see is uh, we talked about this with Lori Lindsay, yeah. Allie Wagner, like double pivot, double pivot yeah. having so both Andy Sullivan and Sam Coffey be in that six, which is a double pivot, which allows for one to move forward and one to slot back. So there's constantly coverage centrally while also like balancing out your attack and moving play- players forward. I mean, I don't know. I, yeah. I guess we'll see how the we roll is out. We haven't really seen it, right? That's like oh, a that's like a request. It's like a want. Like we're sort of like putting it out in the air. Like but we want to manifest it. <laughs> we're getting to that point where we're we're less than a year out from the World Cup. So like if Vlad Kwanenowski wants to start incorporating new formations, um, having them transition on the fly. Like, yes, these players are intelligent enough and soccer savvy enough to do that, but you've got to start implementing it in in game like situations now. So I think that this is a bit of a bold statement, but if we're going to see any formational changes for the World Cup, we will see them in these two matches against Nigeria. Otherwise, yeah. I don't foresee it happening. I don't know. Like, I think it might. I think it might be something more like an in-game adjustment. You know, I don't know if it's going to be like right off the back. We're going to see a starting eleven in a completely new formation. That just doesn't. That just doesn't fall in line with what we've seen from this coaching staff. You know, I think we're going to see that typical, you know, 4 3 3. We're going to see, uh, you know, a similar front line that we saw at times um, in the build up to the CONCACAF qualifiers and then during the, the CONCACAF qualifiers. And perhaps there will be um, situational moments during the, the match that perhaps we will, you know, see some, some different things, you know, and. I think that's more me kind of maybe like hoping for that because again, I'm with you. I think that Nigeria is, a, is, is an excellent side to go up against post CONCACAF championship and, you know, be able to say, Hey, we actually might be able to try out some different unique game scenarios here. And I hope, I really do hope we get to see it. I think especially you know, going from that first game to that second game, Lisa, you know, maybe, maybe they might divvy it up. You know, maybe they, they want to have a certain tactical plan against Nigeria in, you know, Saturday's game in Kansas city, you know, versus uh, Tuesday's game in, in, in Washington uh, DC. So uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'm hopeful, like fingers, cr- <laughs> fingers crossed, yeah. right? I guess that's what we're doing right now. We will see. it will be really interesting. I think we'll learn a lot as, as, fans and analysts of the United States women's national team. Um, if bringing in all of these different players, if it's for training experience or if it's to be implemented in gameplay and if, if any changes will happen. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to put us both on the spot here. You know, we've got uh, two new additions to this roster. We, we know the, the 23 who are going in, um, you know, is we maybe have an idea of players who we're going to see over the course of these two two matches. So I don't know. Do we want to do like uh, an attacking third, like starting 11 that we would like to see in this game? Or is, are there players that you want to see get more time in, in, in these games, Lisa? Um, I, I mean, sure, we can run through a starting 11, but players I want to see get more time. Um, Kingsbury, Aubrey Kingsbury in goal. Okay. I, I want to see... She's been called in so many times oh, and wow. and hasn't gotten an, like enough opportunities and enough chances. And so for me, that's something that I would really like to see her get minutes, frankly. Um, in the back line, I think that between like a Gurma and a Cook, I think Gurma has stood out more in NWSL yeah. play and been way more consistent, been way more effective along the back line. So I would really like to see him give – Gurma, that that availability and that opportunity. Um, 
to play and play consistently. Yeah. But those are really the big players that I'm like, you, you've got to give them time. You've got to give them opportunity. I mean, some of the players being called in, I'm not so sure about. Like, I, I think we'll see Sanchez get time. Like, I hope Sam Coffey gets time. But if she doesn't, like, I'm not going to be that surprised. But, yeah. um, like, I think Taylor Korniak will get time. I know you. we talked about Haley Mason being in Kansas City. I could see him playing her because they are in Kansas City. Yeah. And then with D.C., like, she doesn't see the field at all. She's not even dressed. Like, I don't yeah. know how that works. So, but I could see because like she's playing there, like there's, there'll be a big crowd for her that he gives her time in the Kansas city match. Yeah. I mean, if she, if she dresses and, and it's a certain scoreline and there's a certain scenario that there may be that they don't need an extra look at, I, I wouldn't be too, too surprised um, by that. But um, I'm with you on Girma. I, I want to see, I want to see Germa specifically against a very good attacking side like mm -hmm. Nigeria. I really do want to see um, this back line kind of um, tested in, in, in that capacity. So I, I would imagine that we, you know, are going to, you know, continue to see, um, you know, continued development between, you know, Fox and Huerta at those outside back positions when it comes to that kind of, you know, rotating center back duo there. It's, it's, it's a, it's a pair of friendlies, right? So we're obviously going to see some type of combination of cook Germa in, in Sauerbrunn along that, that, that do that duo of games in, in that pairing. So, but I think to start, I think I would really like to see, to see Germa within that as well. I hear you about Kingsbury. I do, I do wonder if, you know, kind of post NWSL regular season, um, if uh, a different third goalkeeper is called in to, to some of those, um, to, to some later camps, quite frankly, um, just because of the lack of time that, that she's gotten, uh, you know, in, in both in the buildup to, uh, to the qualifiers and then coming out of the qualifiers as, as well. Um, and Casey Murphy appears to sort of be back in form for sure with with clubs. So I, I don't know if she's going to be getting a start in, in either of these games once more. Um, yeah, here's a fun one. Maybe I think with the forward line, the forward trio, right? We're talking about you know Pew Smith, uh, Morgan. But let me let me ask you this. Let's 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 put our, our takes out on this. Based on current form, Megan Rapinoe's coming off of an outstanding August in NWSL with Oil Rain. Does does Megan Rapinoe get starts in in either of these games, or or do you think uh, she's still going to continue to sort of play this this sort of off the bench role? Megan Rapinoe has been outstanding for Oil Rain in the NWSL for club play. That is undeniable. I think it more so just solidifies why she's being called into these camps. I don't think Rapinoe will start. I think that Rapino understands, Lacko understands, um, players like Pew Smith understand that it, this is a transition phase for that front line. And Megan Rapino is there to push the intensity in training, to be that incredible leader, to show them what can happen. Um, I think she'll get time coming in off the bench and make a massive impact, as we've seen her do, even if she gets like less than 10 touches on the ball she'll still make an incredible impact with five touches on the ball. So I don't think she'll start not because of her play. I mean, her play, she deserves to start and play 90, but I think it's more about getting other players opportunities, finding a rhythm um, with some of these players that he wants to see moving forward, be that stable front line. And, and maybe it becomes someone like Smith, Pew and Hatch in that midfield or in that front line, because Hatch is also coming off of a brace with Washington spirit. Like she's a player that didn't get as much time in the CONCACAF W championship due to that back injury that she had. She had to end up going home earlier. So could that happen? But um, nah, I don't think Rapino will start, but not because it, she doesn't deserve it, but just because yeah. that's not the direction of the team. Yeah, I, I hear you. I think I think with all the uh, discussion and everything that they've talked about, you know, saying the conversations that they've had with the coaching staff and and repeating on sort of her role moving forward, that despite the you know really hot form that she's in right now, that maybe that might not necessarily mean that it's going to you know equal a start um, in these matches. But you know, what's it with six forwards going into this? You you would imagine that the the substitutions are in place, so it'll probably be 
you know, obviously Hatch for, for Morgan or or Rapino in in Purse for for somebody like a Pew or a or a Smith. But uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll know. We'll have a lot of answers, I think, by that first game in Kansas City. And by the second game in, in DC, maybe we'll we'll see a little bit of different energy around the game, but there's also a little bit of a historical component that's going to be occurring with this second match in DC. When the United States women's national team plays this second friendly against Nigeria in DC at Audi field, us soccer, the USW net uh, NT players association and the U S men's national team players association uh, will officially sign a historic new collective bargaining agreement on the field as part of a, uh, you know, sort of the post game ceremonies. Yes, this is huge. I mean, um, when this was announced about the collective bargaining agreement uh, being solidified and then the fact that it gets to be signed post-game live at Audi Field, this is the second CBA signing that we've seen this year live, right? The first one yeah. in the NWSL at Angel City. That was huge, um, the commissioner there and everything. And and with this one, um there will be players there from both the men's side and then, of course, the women's side. So USSF president Cindy Parlo Cohn, she will sign it as well as the U.S. Women's National Team uh, Players Association officers, which is Becky Sauerbrunn, Crystal Dunn, Sam Ewis, and Becca Rue, um, as, long, as well as some of the men's players' representatives. So they'll all be there signing this. I mean, this is just massive for the U.S. It's the first time that a federation – in the world of soccer has agreed to equal world cup prize money. And that is just massive heading into a men's world cup year. And then a women's world cup um, because the men's world cup is literally around the corner. So the fact that this is happening is a huge achievement for not only the U S soccer, um, the women's team, the men's team, but honestly the world of football and it's happening on September 6th, which is, Women's Equality Day. Uh, this date was picked to commemorate the 1920 certification of the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote. So there's, they didn't just pick this date and say, we'll sign this. They they made it a little bit more historical, have a little bit more meaning on it as, as they sign this historic CBA. It's going to be a big, big day. 2022, the year of the collective bargaining agreement. You love to see it. 